You know, I always have mixed feelings about making videos like this one, because on the one hand, I want to warn people against wasting the money, but on the other hand, I kind of want ASUS to sponsor me. But ASUS, why is this motherboard so expensive? Because the ASUS Turf B650 Plus is going to set you back around $240. So it is in the lower echelons of the upper echelons of B650 motherboards, if that makes any sense. So its main competition is motherboards like the B650 Eros Elite, which you've already covered on this channel before, which right now is $10 cheaper. So why does this motherboard feel so much more budget than it actually is? Starting off with CPU power, here we have 12 plus 2 power phases, rated at a maximum of 60 amps. That combined with just 8 plus 4 pin CPU connectors, makes this a pretty low end offering when it comes to just the CPU power delivery. And compared to many other B650 boards, it's pretty disappointing. And granted, for many people, this won't make any difference. Like, you can still throw pretty much any CPU in there, and unless you overclock it, then you honestly won't have any issues. But still, if you're spending so much money on a motherboard, you'd expect features like that to at least be comparable to the competition, and you don't want to feel ripped off. At least the PC expansion is a bit more standard, with a primary 16x Gen 4 slot, another physical 16x slot below that, and two 1x slots. So hey, at least 1x slots, that's at least one thing that this motherboard has going for it that the Gigabyte motherboards don't have. And on top of that, you also have three M.2 slots, with one of them being rated at Gen 5. And for additional storage, you also have a mere four SATA connectors, even if six has kind of become the standard for most motherboards. So whatever, the PC expansion is just fine. But when it comes to the rear IO, oh boy, did they mess up here. Because this motherboard, which may I remind you, cost $240, has only six USB Type A ports. And the worst part is, only two of them are USB Gen 3.2, the other four are all USB Gen 2 speeds. Yikes. Again, I'm not asking for every single motherboard to have like gigabyte levels of USB Type A, but do I have to remind you that that motherboard is $10 cheaper and has 11 USB Type A ports by comparison? But one area that this motherboard weirdly wins in is USB Type C, because this motherboard has two USB Type C ports, something you don't even see on many way more expensive motherboards. So that's interesting. After that, both HDMI and DisplayPort, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi Fi 6C. Oh, it's not 6C. It's just plain old Wi Fi 6. Even though, like, pretty much every single motherboard nowadays has Wi Fi 6C. And finally, there's the audio jacks, which I have to congratulate Asus on remembering to add more than three audio jacks, unlike Gigabyte. But I have to ask, what happened here? Like the standard model used to have either 6 3.5mm audio jacks or 5 plus optical spinif. And here, you only have 5. And the place where the 6th port would have usually went is occupied by the BIOS flashback switch. Which, uh, blah, blah, what? Why? Just, just why? I mean, that I guess that's technically better than just the free audio jacks that Gigabyte gives us. Okay, whatever, I'm done complaining about the rear I.O. on this motherboard. Just kidding, no I'm not. The spacing between the HDMI and display port is like weird. It's weirding me out. So then, what is up with this motherboard? Granted, ASUS Tough products have always kind of been in their own kind of range. They're more budget, but they're also kind of they're doing their own thing when it comes to features and appearance. And for people who do want that specific black and orange industrially, militarily theme that the ASUS Tough products have, so it'll definitely fit in with the rest of your ASUS Tough build, but it just commits so many mistakes and does so many things worse than other identically priced or cheaper motherboards. So I really don't understand why they decided to price it the way they did. So unless you can find it on a crazy sale, I'd probably stay away from this one. But still, if you really want to buy this motherboard or pretty much any other B650 motherboard, then make sure to use the Amazon links down in the video description below. And also let me know exactly what other motherboards you want me to cover in the future. And if you're still here and want to help support the kind of work we do here, then make sure to check out our Patreon, because even one single dollar month truly goes a long way, while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my extinct patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Justin Rage, Ella Ronyak, Balaj Valka, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so, so much support truly goes a long way. Down you're just going to find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's how it's. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.